Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how I created this super easy, super low tech jungle aquarium. So I'm going to be using a 30 by 30 by 30 centimetre cube. Um, it's OptiWhite glass and for anyone that's interested this is from All Pond Solutions. They're a really nice tank and they're a really reasonable price. I'm going to be going in with some Tropica aquarium soil. I'm not going to be using too much um, just because the plants that are going to be going in the actual water part of the scape, there isn't really going to be too many. Um, some of them might be quite demanding, but we can always add root tabs if at a later date if I decide that they need it. But I'm just going to go with a small layer just to provide some level of nutrition. But because I'm wanting this to be quite easy maintenance, I'm just not going to use too much because I don't want to be doing too many water changes and combating that ammonia that's going to be leaching out. Next, I'm going to cap it with some sand. So this is some leftover sand from when I created my 90p and it's actually a mix of Colorado sand and La Plata sand. When you mix them together, it does give a really nice warm tone. Um, but because that wasn't enough, I'm just going to cap the rest off with some ADA La Plata sand. This is a more white sand, so I guess it lends itself to a sort of more tropical, jungly, beachy look. So the wood that I'm going to be using in the scape today is a piece that I've used before in a previous scape, but it's called Mojo Barrico Wood. Now, it's really, really interesting, this piece. I actually bought it for a shallow tank that I did a while ago. Um, it has got a flat end, so I am going to have to find a way to hide that. Um, but yeah, it's just got lots of nice textures and lots of like nooks and crannies for um, epiphytes and things like that. Um, and it stays quite light coloured as well, um, which I kind of really like about it. So yeah, it was decided whether or not to kind of put it in bottom or top first, but I ended up deciding, deciding on this position. Um, and you'll see, obviously, there's plants that are going to be coming out the top of it. And just putting it in this way meant that I could attach some plants um, a little bit easier. And the rocks that I'm going to be using are just some simple rounded river pebbles. These were actually just collected from, from outside on, on the beach and things like that. Um, so, yeah, it just kind of makes it more affordable. So there is like a mix of size and sizes and colours. And I'm just going to put them in the tank. There's no sort of rhyme or reason to where I'm placing things at the moment. I um, recently attended a workshop with Josh Sim. And when he was putting rocks in the aquarium, he was saying that basically he always got taught, I think it was by Mr. Takashi Amano, um, just to put them in and then take out what you don't like. It's better to put more in and take out than not put like the right amount in sort of thing, if that makes sense. So I kind of thought, right, I'm going to use this logic. So I just piled loads in and then kind of took it from there and then started removing them one by one to create the sort of look and the aesthetic that I was going for. So I used a mixture of sizes, colours um, and that sort of thing. And eventually I will go in with some smaller stones as well to add detail. I just wanted to add some additional uh, details to the wood. So these are just bits of Redmore root wood um, that I just wanted to attach onto the, to the piece of Mojo Barrico wood. Again, just to add sort of more detail and more texture and more places that I could sort of wedge plants in and things like that. And to attach that together, and um, this has probably been seen on my channel many times now and pretty much every other Aquascapers channel, but to attach it, all you need to do is put some cotton wool in the uh, contact point and drench it in uh, some super glue. But I just needed to add some rocks at the bottom just to support this little branch, because um, otherwise it was just kind of going to be hanging in the middle of nowhere. So once they were sort of in place and I was happy, I could go in with the super glue. And another little method as well, just to hide those spots if they're visible, is just to cover it in some uh, either aqua soil um, or aquarium sand. And it just makes that seem a little bit more uh, invisible and looks a little bit not more natural. So once all that was in position, I was kind of happy with how it was looking and where the main stones were. It was then time to go in with some detail stones. So the stones that I'm going to be using for detail is the ADA. Uh, just standard gravel. This is a really nice gravel. It's got really sort of nice natural colours to it and it tends to go well with uh, most hardscape stones and things like that. And I had a big bag of it left over, so I just thought, why not use it? Um, and yeah, I'm just sprinkling that over the sort of bulk of the stones and just letting it fall randomly. Um, and yeah, just pretty much wherever it falls, we'll just leave it where it is. And it just kind of creates a more natural uh, aesthetic and as I say the colours kind of blend in with a lot of the colours of these rounded pebbles because you kind of got greys and blacks and oranges and like creamy colours and things like that. 
And then I am going to go over that again with some Congo sand. So this is again from ADA. It's supposedly quite a rare gravel to get, especially in the UK. I think it's pretty much like a, a slightly darker, small grain version of the ADA gravel. Um, and it just kind of allows you to get like a more seamless transition or a smoother transition, should I, should I say, between the sand and the bigger rock. So again, just going in, sprinkling that in kind of randomly, um, but just sort of focusing on the areas where the actual stones are. So this cool little gadget is from a company called Clip and Grow. This isn't sponsored or anything. I paid for this. Um, but these are sort of designed so that you can put terrestrial plants uh, in them and the roots sort of hang in the water so you kind of clip the stalks into the little holes or the stems sorry into the little holes and then obviously the roots go submerged underwater so you're essentially growing them hydroponically so you can get um, like a solo which is this one which just holds like one or two sort of thin stems or the trio. Uh, but the first plant that we're going to go in with, or I'm going to try to attempt to attach, is a fern. So this probably won't go in the clip and grows, but things like this, baby monstera, philodendron, begonias, that kind of thing. They've got like a, a thick stem and um, they'll be perfect for it. I've also got a mixed tub of Anubias. Um, so as you can see, although I did clip it on upside down, um, but as you can see, uh, yeah, they just sort of clip in through that little hole and then you can just place it anywhere on the tank that you like and it just kind of gives you um, an easy way to grow uh, like immersed plants or have plants coming out the top of your aquarium. And also what's great is it's fantastic for water quality because they take up a lot of excess nutrients. Now trying to attach the fern was a little bit tricky. Obviously that's got a very different root system and it doesn't have a stem. So what I ended up uh, doing is wrapping it in sphagnum moss um, and then just like going around it with some cotton because um, otherwise that would just be an absolute mess in the aquarium. And I was just going to try and wedge it at the back between the wood and the glass as best I could but it wasn't going to be completely submersed under the water. I'm not too sure how well uh, ferns fair in in completely waterlogged conditions so this is um yeah a bit of a trial and error but this is the kind of position that i wanted to get it in but it was just not having it um so this isn't ideal uh, but until it sort of roots itself if it roots itself um i just used an elastic band which i wasn't really what i wanted to do i wanted to kind of keep it as natural as possible um, but I wasn't really sure of another way to do it and it's all I had on hand at the time. So it has just been elastic banded into place with sort of like the bottom few centimetres of the roots in the water and obviously the sphagnum moss will just help keep it sort of damp and, and moist. And then as you can see, I'm using the Clip and Grow Trio just next to that. Um, and that's got some, I can't remember the name of the red plant, um, and some baby monstera. I mean, I bought it as baby monstera, but it looks more like philodendron to me. Then again, I'm not very good with plants, so who knows? But once they were in position, um, I thought I wanted to put them in first because then it would sort of give me uh, an indication of how I wanted to plant the bottom. So the bottom is just going to be extremely simple and it's just going to be basically a mix of Anubias um, just wedged into, into anywhere that I can wedge them, really. Um, these species will just be a mix of nana, barteri, uh, coin leaf. Um, they're just basically all leftovers that I've had from scapes or bits that I've managed to, to steal from other scapes that I've got dotted around. So now it was time to add some plants to the back. And um, if I can just drop this in as a little by the way, um, but I teamed up with a company called Lincolnshire Pond Plants. Now they're a family run business in the UK and they do aquarium plants and pond plants. So pond plants is predominantly what they're known for. Um, and they basically reached out and said, or asked me if I could create a little uh, plant bundle for them. So in this bundle, um, I picked some of the plants that they provide, this Amazon sword being one of them. And if I could just basically put a bundle together and I decided on like an easy low tech bundle. So in that plant bundle, you get like five or six species of plant. Um, so yeah, you can get that on their website. I think it's about 25 pound. And yeah, it's just some, some easy, nice plants that you can pretty much create a full aquarium with like a nano size aquarium. Anyway, back to what we're doing here. Um, as you can see, I put the Amazon sword in. I've just put some Valisinaria nana in. And then this is a tiger lotus that came out of the 90p. I've got a feeling it's going to be far too big for this skate, but 
I just really want to put a tiger lotus in a skip. So I decided to put it in here and we'll see what happens. I then took some trimmings um, from the 90p. So we've got some Helanthium tenalum green. Um, I just really love at the minute like grassy type plants. And I think grassy plants paired with rounded type stones just create the most natural riverbed style look so yeah we're going in with some helanthium tenalum green and then I also put in some blixa japonica which I think is just one of my favorite plants at the minute it just stays a really really sort of like light vibrant green and it actually does quite well in low tech setups I don't know how well it will do in this scape as it's not going to get a lot of light where it's placed but this whole thing is a little bit of a test so yeah we'll see how how it goes so at this point, I think it's time to fill it up with water because I'm still a little bit unsure on the right side. I just think it looks a little bit open and not weighted evenly. You've got one really big, thick piece of wood and then like two very thin, twiggy pieces of wood on the right hand side. And I'm not not sure how I feel about that yet. So I just thought, right, we'll fill it up with water, see how it looks with water in um, and go from there. So filled it up with water and I was like yep definitely need something so as you can see I put some boosts in the kind of gap that was just like a cutting from one of my scapes and it's ended up creating this like cave which I actually really really like I didn't do that intentionally it's just kind of a happy accident um and yeah so this is actually y'all seeing this video now uh but it's been running for about a week and so far the fern's not dead which is good news um so yeah, overall, pretty, pretty happy with it. It's a new type of skip for me. I've not done anything with sort of like terrestrial plants growing out of the top. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. And I'm not stocking it yet, of course, but when I do, let me know what fish you'd put in here. It's gonna sit at a, at a room temperature. Um, it does actually sit on top of my tortoise tank and exactly where this tank is below is the heat lamp, which runs at like 40 degrees Celsius. So this tank will actually stay quite warm constantly. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, let me know if you did in the comments. Let me know what livestock you'd put in here. Thank you so much for watching. It really does mean a lot. And I will see you on the next one. Bye.